Can you cut any background for me? Yeah, I'm going into a uh, quiet room. Life is too short to be fake. By the time you want to be real, you find it's too late. Well, what can I say? Life is sort of tricky that way. When you're ready to take off, you start to hesitate. Well, I heard a man say, start punch fear in the face. And I decided to, cause I ain't got no more life to waste. I'm at the good part, and I'm drinking it in. And I don't want to have no regrets when I bless you guys and welcome to we are in time kingdom ambassadors for christ and today we're just kind of like having some um, audio issues we have we've been having all kinds of issues today but um thank god you guys made it into the room 
And uh, today on my show, we are going to have George Vincent and his lovely wife, Christina. Now, I've been calling you Christina, but he just said Gina. Is that kind of short or no? That was a, that was a mistype. <laughs> oh, okay. I was like, oh, somebody's in trouble. <laughs> okay. Well, again, today, uh, my lovely guest, uh, actor and producer George Vincent, and also lovely wife, Christina. And we also have my lovely friend, Vanessa Moore. She is also an actor. Um, she is also a dancer and a vocalist, and she is a painter. And so you forgot to put up some of those paintings, Vanessa, but I want you to be able to show some of those when you get a chance before we get off. So today we're going to be talking about Heavenly Deposit and whatever else George wants to bring forth today. I'm going to let him just tell you guys about his uh, amazing movie. I do suggest that you watch this movie. I watched it several days ago. And you guys, it really touched my heart. It made me cry. It made me laugh um, on some areas, but the majority of it was just very touching to me. And it really talks about a lot of uh, my life what I have been raised in, you know, poverty and things of that nature. So it really um, encouraged me to continue to hold on to God, hold on to his promises and to watch God blossom and bloom his promises in my life. So I hope today is a blessing to you. And we're going to turn it over to George and his wife. Go ahead, George. Well, thank you for having us. Uh, this is the first, this is a first to be on with my wife. So thank you for that. Wonderful. Uh, yeah, we're just, and hi, Vanessa. Uh, so yeah, no, we're excited to be here and we're excited to- Vanessa, answer. your mic is, is muted. Hold on, let me turn on your mic. Hold on a minute. Um, there. I was just gonna say, I want to take a better yeah. look at you because it's hard to see with this lighting. Beautiful couple, I love you. <laughs> uh, thank you, Vanessa, appreciate it, appreciate it. No, we're here. Uh, any questions you might have, lead us into anything you want and uh, we'll just go from there. Well, I want you to just tell the testimony about Heavenly Deposit. I just want you to really be led by God today. I want your wife to be involved with this. Just tell your yeah. story. You know, I want you to um, really bring people in to this movie. It really was a blessing to me. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. So basically back in um, 2008, 2009, that, that timeline, um, you know, when the housing crisis, everyone was going through so really difficult times so we were no different and uh what happened was that you know if you know my background i kind of grew up in a greek orthodox household so we believed in god and then we were you know, always taught to respect and the, the issue hey george was, before you continue can you check your mic as well um i just want to make sure that we've got a good sound here i don't want to miss anything that you guys are saying yeah. i don't have the greatest um mic or camera i do apologize about that i work it with what i have but let's just make sure on all ends um at vanessa you've got your earpiece so that's good so um if you could just make sure it's not turned up too much or not too yeah. low how's this is this okay right here that sounds perfect yeah sounds good excellent okay. excellent so basically we, we were going through just what everyone was going through very difficult time at that time we we're losing our home to foreclosure um there was just a lot of craziness going on and 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 uh, to, to give you just understand of my you know growing up background at that area um when my dad had gotten sick i um i basically we were taught to always believe in god trust him and pray and all that and then when when i felt that he needed his help the most i felt that he wasn't there mm -hmm. and so when he did when my dad passed away i it's not like I, I hated God. I just realized that he was too busy for me. That was my assumption. I was a young kid. So I figured, well, if, um, if I need to do anything, it's going to be up to me. So I started, I, I adopted this philosophy. If it's to be, it's up to me. And, um, you know, flash forward many years later, uh, that thing, it really came back to bite me in the butt because when you trust in yourself and you don't have like a higher power, if you don't have God in your life, who do you turn to when you yeah. fail? Yeah. And, uh, and that's really what transpired. I, we were looking at a, at a very difficult situation and, you know, for the movie, we, it's, it's, there's two different timelines that I merged together. 
and this is with Christina's health issue and also that the losing that you know losing the home and all that. So I put it together for the movie, but they both did happen. Um, and it, uh, you know, so basically, um, it was one of those things where we were going to lose the home. We had no. We were trying to sell all our jewelry and everything, and eventually, we. I ended up going, uh, selling the stuff. I came, it was actually here in this room where I heard a voice and it, it the voice said, go to the bank. Mm -hmm. And, um, now it wasn't an audible out of your voice. It yeah. was in, in, you know, in my head. Yeah. yeah. And I heard it and, and I, I, I froze really. And then I heard it again, go to the bank now. And so I, I you know, I was at this point, I had nothing to lose, you know, if it was God, awesome. You know, maybe he could help me out. If it wasn't, what do I have to lose? So I went to the bank and it was after hours, the bank closed at five, you know, 5 p.m. It was 5 15. And I ended up um, going there and the parking lot's empty except for one car. So as I go to open up the door, there's a gentleman the main part of the bank is closed, but the area where you can deposit money at the ATM and all that, that's open. It's, you know, it's another area. And there's this gentleman who's got his back to me and he's got a baseball hat on and a suit. And, and I'll never forget this. This was incredible. It's because of this story, this moment yes. that it made me start looking into creating heavenly deposit. So I walk in and I didn't want to scare the individual. Wow. Uh, I said, I said, Hey, how you doing? And he turns around and he looks at me and he goes, better now that you're here. Mm, and I yeah. smiled and I go, thanks. I said, um, I said, no one's ever greeted me like that before. And he goes, well, if you can't be nice to someone now, when can you be? Mm. There's always heaven. And I looked at him and I go, yeah, yeah. All right. So then he says, you have a good day. And he leaves. Mm -hmm. I deposit the money as I'm about to walk out. I see him leaning on the back of my car and this is not in the movie. This is not in the movie. I changed it for yeah. the movie's sake. It takes place in the bank because it was too noisy to shoot outside. But so this is all in the parking lot now. So I run out and I said to him, I go, Hey, you all right? And he goes, yeah, is this your car? And I said, yeah, he goes, it was rolling backwards. I just stopped it. And I, and I, I noticed that, you know, when, and I was like, I just jumped in the car, I pulled forward, put on the emergency brake, and I and he goes, You got a minute? And I said, Sure. And he goes, You know, when I saw you inside, I thought you were the one. But now that this is your car, I know it's you. And I smiled and I go, Okay. I said, um, I said, You got my attention, right? And he goes, Because you know, I was I was at home, minding my own business, and God told me to come here. And tell the man everything's going to be okay. Wow! Wow! And and, I'm, and I just I just looked at him and, and I was you know I was shocked. And then I said, okay. I said I said I, I was at home and I heard a voice tell me to go to the bank. And he goes, this is no coincidence. And that's how the whole thing started. By the time the conversation finished, because I don't want to give away everything in the movie, but mm -hmm. you know he said to me that. He brought me to Christ that that after, that evening, mm -hmm. and when he finished, he said, "Mark the time," and I'll never forget this. And it was like uh, it was five thirty-eight, and, and and he goes, "Right now, he goes, all the angels in heaven are rejoicing." Wow. He goes, "You have to know that everything is going to work out for you." <sighs> and, and, I, and I just got all teary-eyed. I remember I just you know turned and just looked down, and I was sobbing. And when I looked back up. He was gone. Yeah, wow. Wow. And wow. I'm there, and I'm sitting there going, this is incredible. I mean, wow. so, so it was that moment that got everything going. But, but you have to understand, he was right. Everything did change, mm -hmm. whether it was her health or whether it was the home. Like I said, everything worked out. And the hope that, that God gave me was was like i've never experienced it before and i wanted other people to experience it so that's what it was that's what got me going and i started telling people about this whole experience mm -hmm. 
wherever I was, just, you know, just talking to people, just saying, you know, hey, can I, can I share something with you? And I didn't realize it, but I was witnessing. Right. And, and, uh, and then finally, I ran into someone who said, to, you know, I told him the situation. He turned, that, he, turned, he turned out to be a minister. And he said that your story is so powerful that you should make it into a film and share it with the world. Well, why didn't I think of that? I mean, I've been an actor for eons, you know, and why didn't I think of it? Well, it was, I took his, his comment to heart and that set in motion had to be deposit. So I learned how to learn how to write a script. I mean, I've been an actor for a long time, but to write a script, it's, it's something different. Yeah. So, so uh, let me ask you a question. Okay. Um, I'm blown away. I have, wow. <laughs> I'm blown you, have away. To, you have to watch this movie. I, and when I say it is very inspirational, it is definitely something that was given to him by God. It was given by God. It is straight from heaven. Oh, I know that. Um, and may I confirm that and interject? Because yes. when you look all throughout history, uh, God uses the, the weak to confound the wise. As you know, he uses very flawed human beings all throughout history. And you notice the people who made yes. differences were single individuals. It wasn't always group, big group, groups of people. Yes, you have like the example of Jericho where the army of God is singing around the, the walls, right? Uh, but for the most part, if you look throughout history, people have made an impact. And it takes that encouragement. And I think the scripture, you know, a kind word makes the spirit glad. Yes. Uh, well, brother, I just wanted to share this with you. It takes one person to make a huge impact. My, my grandmother, who was the most precious person to me on the planet, who raised me the last two years of her life, these past two years, I was taking care of her, changing her diapers, and she passed away. So I had my, my very first tragic loss. And so obviously there's, there's been questions about where she is and what she's doing. And Lord, is she okay? Is she with you? And, you know, of course, I question her her eternal state and her faith and her theology and all that stuff. And so God's been giving me nothing but dreams and visions for the last two months and my, my, my family, right? Well, one of the, I, I will wake up with, and this ties into what you just said, your testimony. I just want to say that you really impacted me in a time of real, of, of real grieving, how you could impact one person to move on with their life in such a way that will impact others, right? That has a ripple effect. When you said that that man said, better now that you're here, now, my grandmother, a very beautiful, refined English woman, uh, she uh, died from the COVID vaccine, from the, the Fauci ouchie, the jab. And she, um, one of her famous sayings was, when he'd say, grandmother, how are you doing? When he'd come to her house, she goes, oh, better now that you're here. And that was her famous saying. And those words are so specific. And she literally yeah. decided, yeah, last night I had a dream about her and we had dreams about her this week and my whole family. Everybody had a dream about her and my, my grandfather, and that she's passed. She was like the queen of our family. And uh, for you to say those very words, I just want you to know that that, that is so impactful for someone. And and I just, I'm just so blown away. <laughs> I'm just a few minutes in and I'm already just so blessed by speaking with you. Wow. Sorry for your loss, and really, so sorry for your loss. Thank yeah, you. we know about, we're with you on this, uh, what you just brought up. Yeah, she's had some really amazing uh, testimonies, as I have as well. I think a lot of us, um, God has, we have so many testimonies. Um, and, you know, actually, there's a scripture that says in Hebrews uh, 13, it says, Do not show hospitality to strangers, for some of you have done this and have entertained angels without realizing That's it. one of my favorite scriptures, and, yeah. Right on. And so it is very amazing that a lot of times, you know, I remember that um, TV program, Touched by an Angel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you remember that? Mm -hmm. so, my grandmother used to watch that. That's so funny. Yes. Yeah. So many testimonies. Michael Landon. Yeah. 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 Uh, a lot of testimonies of uh, people who have well, been- I'm sorry, I'm thinking Highway to Heaven. I'm yeah. thinking of highway. Well, that's what I was thinking. Yes. Is, Mike, is Michael Landon in that one? Yeah, he is, isn't because he? Because yeah. David, yeah. David, our, our my co-star and our producer of the show that Leonor, Leora and I are in is um, he was friends with Michael Landon. Oh man, really good friends. In fact, Michael Landon was in one of his movies back in the day. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. All these connections. God is so cool. How he connects it, it, people. It is. Right. And that's what it's all about. This is what I always say. You know, it's like we need to be um, connecting with each other especially yeah. actors and actresses, you know what I mean? Movie producers, we really need to be coming in and connecting. You know, there's so much competition in the kingdom yeah. of God. And it's what I say, like for women, you know, for a woman, 
you are who God has made you to be. You are beautiful in your own way, in your own yeah. skin. And if you are a confident woman, a confident woman of God, then we need to be uplifting and encouraging other women, you Amen. know, um, yeah. encouraging them to go boldly beyond where no man has gone before. <laughs> but now, now I'm going to, I'm going to get, I'm going to get a little bit kind of like PG 17 and graphic here, but I, I have something to piggyback off of that. You're right. You know, I have had, um, so uh, without talking about myself going so deeply into my past, um, my, my first introduction to sexual experience was a forced situation. It was non-consensual. You can fill in the blanks. But the experience that I had with, and, and uh, yeah, I wouldn't say that scarred me. I was 19. I was a virgin. I was raped. I wouldn't say that scarred me, but it did change the way I, I, I sought love in all the wrong places. I will tell you what did scar me was the, the the relationships between women and myself throughout my life. I would I would sooner take that horrible experience than to experience the 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 awful brutal treatment of mean, bitter, cantankerous, jealous, leaky faucet dripping women, you know, who are just uh, just out to to you know daggers for you, you know. And so you make a you you bring a good point. I believe as a believer. In Christ, it doesn't matter what your jealousy is. I, I don't understand jealousy. I never have. I just think it's the most, That's it right. leads to really vicious yeah. things. I think it's, the yep. Bible talks about it as one of the most uncontrollable sins. Because yes. I mean, where can you go from there? I mean, it was jealousy that caused Satan to fall. I mean, he was obviously jealous. And I mean, I think yep. that's like the number one sin, like simultaneously with pride that they go hand in hand, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think as women, we ought, we ought to edify one another. Right. Right. Um, I want to ask stop stealing um, other people's husbands, ladies. Right. I mean, I want to ask you. Uh, I want to ask you some questions on reference to that and what you've dealt with. But and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to ask those questions with you, George, because I want to talk a little bit about the bank um, blessing. I'm going to call it the bank blessing. Okay. Right. Yeah. That'll be a good one for you yeah. to write. You gave me a heavenly okay. deposit today, brother, and yeah. that was the confirmation uh, that my grandmother is safe in heaven. Thank you so much. Yes. So, oh, Christina, yeah. how do you feel about that? How do you feel about, um, I mean, have you had women to come and encourage you? Because your testimony, part of your testimony was what was going on with your husband at the time. And I don't want to give away the movie as well, but you were going through some health issues. Um, so talk a little bit about that, how you felt. And I, it seemed um, to appear in the movie that you were definitely a believer. You believed in God, but you were just kind of on shaky ground as well. So talk a little bit about your feelings, your emotions as to what was going on with you and your relationship with God at that time. Wow, I don't know where to begin. <laughs> um. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm 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 two point second five seconds away from throwing that cat out the window. Okay. No. We love our two. We love our, we love our kitties. Um, I love my cat, but well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, oh my God, I don't know where to start. Um, I think the majority can relate to how I felt in many ways because uh, coming from a very strict. Christian family, raised that way, going to church every Sunday, reading the Bible, everything going smooth to not going smooth and tragedies along the way, you tend to kind of lose hope, mm -hmm. thinking that everything you've learned spiritually um, kind of went sideways. Mm -hmm. You start not kind of believing and you lose that faith and hope and right. then somehow you find it again. Mm -hmm. Now, did you have like a spiritual um, backup system? I mean, did you have other women of God that were encouraging you or praying for you, with you? Um, and then also in your church, did you have someone to go to for counseling or your pastor? Um, I think I was like too embarrassed to do that, to be honest. Right. And I'm a very private person, so for myself, I tend to keep everything inside and mm -hmm. locked up. Mm -hmm. so I, I didn't share until after the fact, mm -hmm. everything happened, and then we did the movie together, and then people were like, wow, I didn't know you were going through that. Why didn't you come to me? Right. Yeah. But they're not, they weren't in my shoes. To It was easier said than done. Right. Yeah. So for myself, I didn't, I didn't share until after the fact, after they saw the movie. And they understood, and then they were having 
questions and mm -hmm. and then that's when I shared. Okay. So I could try to help them as well. Okay. It's an, inter it's an interesting dichotomy as a Christian, right? When you enter into this battle that, um, you know, on one hand, you want to be gentle and meek and humble. And, but on the other hand, you want to be bold as a lion, you know? So how do you wrestle yes. with that, especially as a human, you know? Yeah. Yeah, right. And especially with the different personalities, you know, I would say that I was a very confident person growing up, but I had very low self-esteem. And you would think that people would conflate the two, which are not the same thing, you know, which I think is a, a really uh, significant thing in our culture right now, that people are just conflating things that could be similar, which is how Satan works. There's always an element of truth in it, yeah. you know, but just enough lies to convince the masses that Satan's actually the, the right, the, 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 you know, the, the, the voice of truth. Right. Yeah. You know, um, I'm just going to speak this. I'm going to say this to you, sister. Um, Christina, do you like to be called Christina or Chris? Christina. Christina. Okay. Just want to make sure. Um, somebody's, you know, that my name is Leora, but I've been called a menorah before. I'm like, well, I don't, uh, menorah. I don't look like a seventh candlestick holder, but hey, Thank okay. You. But Unless I want, you're in the beauty I want to say this to you. I want to say that um, I think you did very well. I think you are stronger than you think. Okay. I see strength in you. I see potential in you. I see God thrusting you forward so much more than where you are right now. I see you speaking to women and I see you encouraging women because of where you have been and where you've come from. And I believe that God is gonna use a platform. Now listen to me what I say. God is gonna use a platform for you. And I don't be afraid because I believe this is part of the platform. He's gonna use that platform to put you on stage in front of women, in front of people. And you gonna you are gonna go after the things of God. You're gonna to minister to other women who have been broken and torn and don't have another way out. They feel hopeless. God is going to use you. And the reason he's gonna use you is because you have always been quiet, even when you were a little girl. I see you just kind of being a loner. This is what God is showing me. So listen. Yeah, God is showing me you have been a loner. Look, I've been a loner. Vanessa have been a loner. Yeah. The Lord will show me things in the midst of something. And so I'm speaking to you that you are a wonderful, great and mighty woman of God. Oh, and yeah. I see you have been like this flower. You've been this precious flower that God has had in the palm of his hand. And what he's going to begin to do is slowly open up this flower and you're going to blossom. And God is going to launch you forth in the things that he has truly called you to do because we are living in the end times. Jesus yeah. is coming. And there are so many who need your story. You have such a heart of compassion. And I see that in you. But you are going to recognize the strength and the boldness that God has had in you all along since you were a little girl. So you need to get ready, my sister, because God is going to put your husband on that platform. He's already done that, but he's going to launch him for it. But you're going to be right there by his side. OK, yeah. and God yeah. me to tell you this, that you don't have to fear. Yeah, you don't have to be afraid because the word of God says that he has not given you the spirit of fear, but that of power, that of love oh, and that of a sound mind. And oh, I see man. you coming out of the old and I see God thrusting you into something brand new. This is a brand new season for you. God is going to use you to the point where he's going to remake and mold you. And this is what he's been doing. You're going to begin to see differently. You're going to think differently. Yeah. You're going to feel differently. You are a lioness. Yeah. And that lioness, that strength is going to come out of you out of nowhere. You're like yeah. little David and you're going to kill the Goliaths, not only that are have been in your life, but have yeah. been be in other women's lives. This is how God is going to use you. You're going to be a mouthpiece for God. For the nations. And you know what, Leora, I have to say this about Leora. When I first met Leora, we met on a platform that we were both kind of like, um, kind of invited on live, right? And and so like, when you meet someone, you never know what to, to make out of them. If you have discernment, then you maybe have a good idea of, you know, if they're, they have like the spirit of God or spirit of something else. <laughs> you never know what to make of some to, of someone, and and I never thought that you know Leora gets all of these really elaborate um, dreams and visions from the Lord, and and I do as well and have a, a lot. But you know, in the world of uh, charismatic churches and Pentecostal churches, and just this whole Kundalini spirit that's kind of like you know making its way through the church, you you, you always want to pray for discernment that that person's not like a little bit too colorful for for theology, you know. 
And so I wondered that about Leora. I'm going to be completely straightforward and transparent and going, she has a, seems to have a lot of dreams for a normal person, but I'm like thinking of myself and I'm going, I actually do too. And they come back. Leora has been a very prophetic voice in my life. And the things that she's saying to you, I really want you to take to heart because I, I have to say that I prejudged her when I first met her. I just thought, well, this is probably too good to be true, but it actually wasn't too good to be true because God is so much bigger than anything. You know, we put God in a box. And I just wanted to say that um, you, Christina, uh, the Lord, uh, I had experience in my life, if you don't mind me just quickly sharing the story about, you know, boldness. I, I think of you as I'm, you know, conversing with you and seeing your demeanor and character that you're probably one of those Christians that are very meek and people tend to conflate meekness with weakness and but meekness is really just power under control you probably have more control than a lot of people such as myself I tend to spout out my mouth and flap my gums and say everything that comes to mind I have no filter I'm trying to come under God's authority but I just want you to know that you should take heed to what Leora is saying and what I'm saying I think that God ordained this to whatever you're going through in your life to let you know that you should just be bold because um I never was able to pray when I first became a Christian and I would avoid all of the prayer meetings. And my pastor would say, you know, you would really benefit from these. And I went to a daughter's conference. I was invited to a daughter's conference uh, recently after, and they were prophesying over my life. And afterwards, this woman came up to me, this beautiful black woman. And she said, you know, what are you doing this weekend? After she prophesied all these crazy things over my life that actually came to pass. I said, well, I'm supposed to go to a prayer meeting tomorrow, but I'm too afraid to because every time I open up my mouth to pray, I feel embarrassed and I have no words and I feel like Moses and um, I, like, I need to translate her and everyone around me has these eloquent prayers, prayers. And she goes, you know, Vanessa, you're going to go to that meeting tomorrow. The Holy Spirit's going to give you utterance. And from this day forward, you are going to be a prayer warrior. I went to that meeting that on Saturday morning. I said, well, shoot, now I have to go because I feel like I'd be disobedient if I didn't. And so I go to that meeting, that prayer meeting, and suddenly the words just came out. God is so faithful. Suddenly I got this boldness that I never had before. Normally I would throw up and pass out in front of the whole community. But I just wanted to give you encouragement that just continue to pray for boldness and for God to give you the voice that, that he wants to give you. Because you know what? We are all accountable as soldiers in the kingdom. We all have voices, you know. Just because my gifts, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going around the world here, but I just want to give you one more example and I'll shut up for the rest of the program. Don't. The girls, the girls in the program when I was in ministry, who I loved and took care of, I became their overseer, became a worship leader. I was taking care of them, praying for them and stuff. Um, a lot of them were, would become, um, oh shoot, I lost my train of thought. I totally lost my train of thought. I can't remember what I was saying. I'll let you talk and maybe the Lord will bring it back to me. Oh my goodness. So anyway. Um... I remembered it, but you'll go ahead. <laughs> Perfect. I'm going to say one last thing and I'll shut up. It's, it's just an encouragement to you. Okay. So here's what the Lord showed me when I was in ministry. I had all these dreams and visions and all these, these, these visible gifts, right? We are all given spiritual gifts. Some are more visible than others. You know, like, for example, we have entertainers, we have musicians, we have artists and people look to those visible people of God and go, oh, they have it so made. They're so amazing. What am I, you know, and they, and they tend to lose focus on their own gifts well, I might be dancing over here in the corner and throwing rainbow flags and being filled with the spirit and laughing and being so happy. This person who doesn't have those, those persuasive gifts might be sitting on the couch with an unbeliever and lead them to the Lord. Which, which, which deed was more successful? Me dancing around over here with my gifts or this person leading that person to Christ? So we have to learn how to balance our gifts and not be jealous of people's gifts and learn that God is... Yes. is sovereign and he works through people in such a mighty way i have to tell you i have had more influence and encouragement through people who don't have my gifts and people who do have my gifts mm -hmm. so amen that's the message for yeah me. amen yeah so you know in acts chapter 2 verses 17 through 20 christina yep. it says Quiet holy that, spirit my sister listen to me it says that and it shall come to pass in the last day saith god that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy 
and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Also, Joel so 2, you really need to get yourself scripture. ready and make sure you have a pen and piece of paper because God is going to pour out his spirit upon you and he's going to start giving you dreams and vision. This is a whole new season for you, sister, and for you, George, as well. But yeah. I just feel like, you know, the Lord is so pleased with the both of you guys. You know, he is so pleased. You know, one of the things that really touched my heart, George, um, was when you were talking to me about mm -hmm. um, them wanting you to take the name of Jesus out of the script. Can you talk a little bit about that for me? I thought that was sure. Just amazing. Sure. So, um, as we all know, you know, that's, that's the background that I, that I have. Mm -hmm. And, um, when I was writing the script, you know, I had some really great friends who were like, look, let me read it. You know, and they were being great notes. Mm -hmm. Um, and again, these were dear friends that I trusted who were writers. And uh, I remember one of them said to me, he goes, yeah, you gotta take out that, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna hurt yourself. The movie's not going to get out there. Career suicide. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, uh, and I remember saying, hey, thank you. I really appreciate what you're saying. I'm going to mm -hmm. take that. I'm not going to take that. Right. You know, and that was my way of, and, yeah. and, and the thing was this, I was very bold. I was very adamant mm -hmm. about not doing that because at the same time I said to him, I, you know, I thought to myself, at least, I didn't have to justify myself yes. to anyone. But if I did do that, if I did take out the name of Jesus from the movie, then I would be denying him again. Mm -hmm. like yeah, exactly. Years. Right. And and I remember thinking to myself, I will never do that again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, how long was it? Um, Classic Peter story, you by came the way. To Christ, how long was it before, like when you say you denied him during your movie, um, you know, your your acting and your career and everything? Because you were, you've been in also other movies as well. And those were not really uh, Christian based or anything. No, like that. So no. um, how long between then when you started your career and when you gave your life to Christ, how many years was that? Oh, wow. So uh, I started my career back in 19. I got into the Screen Actors Guild in 1991. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> So it's been a long time, and, yeah, and I started yeah. in New York. I was doing uh, I was doing theater, and then I started working on One Life to Live. That's how I got my start. Um, so flash forward, we moved out here to California in 1999, mm -hmm. right? Okay, and then I experienced like that whole time. I was just you know living that philosophy: it's the beats up to me kind of thing. Right. And then uh, 2008, 2009 is when that, that happened. So basically, that was in June, July of 2009. Mm -hmm. so after that moment, that's when, that's when I accepted Christ. And that's when I, you know. Right. Uh, and then how? What's your how career, your career been like since then? Like, have you been black? Um, that's ahead, one. Teresa. That, that's, I'm sorry. That's I, thought, I, thought, I thought maybe Leroy and I were about to ask the same question. We were going to. I was going to ask what your oh, career yeah, that's my question. Sorry, I was. I didn't yeah. see. Cause I, I have a little bit of a delay, so if you look okay. paused, I'm not trying to interrupt you. I just don't see that you're no. talking. Yeah, go um, ahead. Um, I'm wondering if you were going to ask the same question. Like, what has your career been like ever since you've been yeah. like, standing up for God? Like, have you been blacklisted or? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. I um, I, it's interesting. I do feel that people kind of look at me a little different. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, but uh, the same token, it's like, you know, I, um, I started, there was a couple of points in, in, in the industry where, uh, I would get sent out for a gig, a role to audition for, and, and it wasn't something I wanted to do. I would like, it was totally against my principles. Yes. And, and before I might've said, Hey, I'm an actor. I can do that. You know, it's, it's what, it's what I do. Well, then all of a sudden there was a, I was looking through a different mm -hmm. lens. Mm -hmm. And even though it was for HBO or whatever, I would, I remember telling my agent, I said, Hey, listen, I, I appreciate this, but I'm not going to go audition for it. I don't want to waste your yeah. time. I don't want to waste their time. And I don't want to waste my time. God will honor that. I've experienced yeah. that in the, in the film industry that he will honor your values. Mm -hmm. So, so to answer your question, Vanessa, um, you know, it's, it's interesting. Uh, certain things have happened for me where like for instance i ended up getting a gig for 
Disney for um, pick, what was it called? Uh, Soul, Disney Soul. Mm -hmm. You know, and I auditioned for it. I didn't know if they were going to keep me in there or not. You know, and then I found out like seven months later. Once I didn't even look at the movie for seven months until you know someone's like somebody wrote right. me, "Hey, congratulations, you're in the film." And I was just like, mm -hmm. I didn't even realize. It. Right. My point is, my my focus of trying to get ahead and being recognizable and making it you know, and all that stuff that that went out the window a long time. Yeah. Ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so a, as I said, he's humbled me beyond yeah. belief. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. And you know, I actually have a theory about that. You know, I think there's two types of people when it comes to the conversion experience. I believe that one, mm -hmm. God breaks people before the point of salvation. And then there's other people that he breaks after the point of salvation. For example, I believe that there's a lot of arrogant people who need to be humbled and God will reveal themselves to him. And even though it's a very humbling experience, such as my own, which I would share some other day, that they have to be humbled after that point. Then there's other people who their entire lives have just sort of had a bad card handed to them, like bad stack where they've just been beat down their entire lives and they've just been broken their whole lives to the point where God will finally let them be so broken to, to where he'll intervene that way. And that's me. I'm, I'm, I'm the bottom of the ladder where God broke me down. And I don't think there's any unbreaking. I think God can do something where he can make you so broken that he can humble you to a point where you will ne actually never have a big head based yeah. on your, your experience for your entire life, you know? And so I, I totally acquiesce to what you're saying for sure. Mm -hmm. um, that is amazing. Yeah. Um, in uh, second Corinthians. Okay. Like I love scripture. So yeah, let's get into it, girl. You then the Lord starts bringing back scripture to me. So you were talking about not changing, um, but yet you did change. You're not changing for the world, but you've changed for Jesus Christ. Okay. That's right. Second Corinthians 5, 17, it says, therefore, if any man is in Christ, then he is a new creature. Oh, yeah. and so, you know, the born again experience is something that it, it, it's kind of hard to explain to someone who does not know the Lord, but to someone yeah. who's been born again, truly of heart, mind, mm -hmm. body, spirit and soul um, can never go back to the old self. Correct. So right. now it, it's like the Lord is using you and your wife, Christina, oh. um, using you guys in a dark place yeah. to shine as his light. We are the body of Christ. And so we are the salt of this earth. And so what better way? You know, there's a lot of people out there that, you know, they're a little bit um, shaky when it comes to like actors and movies and things of that nature because of what this world has portrayed. Yeah, because the, 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 the culture that, that we've grown up in. Yeah. Believers in... Um, in the movie industry as well. And God is even saving a lot of these Hollywood actors and bringing them to Christ so they can yes. be used yep. so they can shine the light of Jesus mm -hmm. Christ in a dark place. There's so many believers who are so stuck behind a four walled building that yeah. they don't want to venture out and they don't want to go into the dark places in order to be a light for Christ to bring right. those who are in dark places out of the dark place. Right. And so how else are we going to shine the light and show the love of God if we don't go into those dark places? So how do you feel about that, George? Uh, I'm like, whatever you want, bring it. You know exactly. what I mean? It's, exactly. I, it's so funny because I, I used to try so hard, you know, mm -hmm. it's like he's taken away that it's not an edge. He's taken away the angst. Yes. For me, you know, and, uh, and it's like, I always say, whatever you want, bring it. You know, I'm open. I'm just, I just want to be a, a, a spoke in his yeah. real life. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just, you know, use me to, to basically help yeah. others, help reach others. Why? Right. That's it. That's and why, why would we strive for anything when God says, don't boast about tomorrow? You might as well just, I don't, I don't bow down and capitulate to the idea that you have to live your best life. That's a very secular, liberal, leftist, new age way of, yes. you know, thinking. So I don't, I don't believe in that. In fact, which, in, which is interesting is that our constitution, not to get political here, but you know what, we're living in an age where everyone's involved in politics. Yep. Jesus went into the temple with a whip. I don't care. We should all be concerned about politics because it shapes everything. 
you know? Um, so, you know, I just don't bow down and acquiesce to this whole, uh, this is like the second time I've lost my train of thought. I'm so sorry. It's just, I'm going around the world. This is such a great conversation. That old age catching up to you, girl. I know. What is, what is going on today? Gosh, just continue. And I'm sure it'll come back to me. Gosh. It's just, you bring up all these great ideas and it's like, I'm going around the world here in my mind because it's like, it's tying into so many things that's happening in our culture these days. Yeah. I, I do. I would like to, to share something with, with you folks. So it's like um, years before, after, after this whole thing happened, after that moment, you know, of coming to Christ, mm -hmm. I, it's funny how I got to meet these gentlemen on the internet. They're two brothers. They're called the Krasagi brothers. Great guys. They're, now they're ministers and they're performers. So, you know, God put me in their orbit. Mm -hmm. And I remember, I remember we, we they, they live in Ohio, I believe. And uh, I remember at one point we actually exchanged numbers and we prayed, you know, on, mm -hmm. on the phone together. And I was like, this is great. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what happened was I remember asking, mm -hmm. them, I go, brothers, I said, you know, I'm not that guy. I said, I am yeah. not that guy to, to sit there. And, you know, I had this experience. I made it, that's my way of reaching people. You know, I, I can't really be, you know, literally preaching. Yes. And I said, and, and, and they're like, you don't have to do that. Right. They said, just be yourself. Yes. Amen. Live your life that pleases, that pleases God. Mm -hmm. life that pleases God. And people will see, you know, you're, 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 you know, the, the goodness in you, mm -hmm. and then Christ in you. Right. And I was like, hey, I can live with that. But actually, it went further than that because then came Luke. So I was like, this is interesting. Here's, here's my way of preaching, you know, right. in mm -hmm. a way where it's, and that's the one thing I didn't want to do. I didn't want this, this movie to be heavy handed. Right. And I've, I've heard from multiple, many people that this is not heavy handed, it's not preaching. Yeah. You know, exactly. and it reaches different different religious groups, which is pretty interesting because you know I focus on Jesus because mm -hmm. that's 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 the way I believe. Mm -hmm. Right. But if it reaches others in other religions, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Yeah. So, you know that's a great and they will be scenario. they will be reached. You know? Yes, that's a great scenario because not everybody's called to preach in a pulpit or in a church or in a synagogue. You know. Um, I'm Jewish, and so I, I'm not called to stand behind a pulpit, and I've never really felt that calling. Yes, I, I preach, you know, I've gone, and I've preached to different churches and things like that, you know, done. And it's actually life. it's biblical and, that you don't. So yeah, I think you're making a right um, choice. Yeah, it's it really depends because the Lord now, when the Lord called me in ministry, yes, I went to a lot of different places, and I did preach in churches. I ministered. I also did, uh, you know, what's called the prophetic dance um, as well. But then there came a time in my life where God started to shift me. And who want, who doesn't want to be an actor? You know, who doesn't want to be in movies or things like that? Everybody does. Especially but, when we are all acting at some yes, point in our life. We act around right. people all the time. We're exactly. all actors. But the thing is, is that what I want people to realize is to understand this is that um, there are believers who are in Hollywood. There are believers who are not mm -hmm. just, you know, maybe not just in Hollywood, but all over the world who are actors and actresses that love the Lord and that are being used for his glory. That is the whole point. Like you said, we're humble before God. Yeah. And, and sometimes, you know, all you have to do is just sit there and love on someone. Sometimes it's just yeah. listening to somebody, yeah. you know, like right. you said, you're right. just being who you are, who God has created you to be, because it's the love of God and it's the light of God that shines through you. And people are like, uh, what is that about you? There's something about you. I yeah. don't know what it is, but you know, do you got a minute to talk? And then things progress from there. You know what I mean? Yep. That's how God first, works. Yeah. First Peter 315, you know, um, let, let them ask you like the hope that you have within you, you know, and also I think of the scripture where somewhere it's like, I love the quote where it's, it's better to keep yourself silent and be counted as wise than to open up your mouth and expel all doubt. But I also uh, just want to go back to the, the, the talk about like kind of the pursuit of happiness. You know, you were talking about live your best life now. And that is like the woke culture right now. Just do you, you live for yourself. Don't care about anyone else. There's no such thing as sacrificial love. You do you, 
you just you just bow down and capitulate to this you know tyrannical Machiavellian <laughs> oligarch system that we're in. And um, basically, I was going to say earlier is that um, I'm not a big history buff. I was terrible in school. I was like a straight D student. But after I got saved, I actually became a very educated person because I read the Bible and I listened to a lot of political conservative Christian commentators who taught me more than I would ever learn in a whole, you know, so thank God I didn't have to unlearn anything. But this whole idea that life um, in, in, in America is life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Yeah, that sounds great, the pursuit of happiness, and I'm all for the pursuit of happiness. But if you actually look back in the original Constitution, the, the original slogan was not that. It was life, liberty, and property. Actually, if you think about it in the Bible with God's message, pursuing happiness is actually a demonic pursuit because we're not guaranteed happiness. We're not guaranteed tomorrow at all. We're not, we have not been put on this earth to continue, you know, before Adam and Eve. Yes, we were pursuit of happiness. It was all happy. But after sin entered the world, death, cancer, sickness, all that stuff entered the world too. So the original slogan was life, liberty, and property. So God actually cares more about our property on earth as Christians. And he does our freedom and happiness because we know that eternally we will have happiness and freedom right now on earth. Our job is to preserve and conserve as conservatives, the fundamental values and principles that our creator gave us. We have unalienable rights. And I think we should all stand up against the government. And I think that us having this conversation as Christians, as, as actors, as uh, political activists for the right cause, we need to come together because the circles are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Exactly. Yeah. George, I wanna ask you, um, can you tell me how does heavenly <clears throat> deposit uh, affect the community? How, how have you seen it um, affect the Christian oh. community and churches where you've gone or um, yeah. of interviews that you have had with pastors and congregations. Yeah, you know, it, it's uh, it's probably the best thing that I could have ever experienced. Mm -hmm. Is you know, you make something. I never, I've never been in the forefront of something where you are like the the, the rod. You know, it's like so basically, yeah. right? You know, if you're going to draw all the attention, meaning good and bad. Yeah. You know, so if somebody doesn't like something, you hear it. If right. somebody likes something, you're going to hear it. You better be prepared if you're going to put your life on display to get some 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 feedback. <laughs> right, right. And that, I was not ready for any of that. If I went into this knowing that this would be a part of the deal, mm -hmm. absolutely not. The funny thing was, I didn't do this for me. I did this for God. Right. And because that was the, fo the focus and to help people have hope, I didn't think anything else but just get it done. Mm -hmm. you know, pursue it, get it done. So um, I can tell you that probably one of the best stories we've had is when you know we've we've heard people reach out to us and say, "Hey, you know, I, I watched your movie. I, I didn't know. I thought I was the only one going through hard times and hardships. And and thank you for making this film and why not? And I was yeah. like, oh, but but some of the better ones." Are like when you hear somebody say when you when you read someone say hey this movie has helped me on my walk with god yeah. wow awesome yeah. the best one we've had is when some this lovely couple reached out to me mm -hmm. and they said that their their son was on the fence about god for many years and after watching the movie he accepted christ that evening <laughs> His, his parents help wow him. You know, that is amazing you know. yeah he leaves the 99 for the one that that scripture could not be powerful oh. uh let's see you're muted vanessa you're muted I was saying with a, story, with, with a story like that, I was thinking that, my goodness, the Lord cannot be more profound in his scripture where he says he leaves 99 for the one. That's yeah. the very first thing that popped in my mind is just how personal our God is and our creator. And stories like that, we cannot treat it as something so passive, like the way people treat elderly people. Oh, they're old. They're going to die anyway. 
No, they're old, but they also have a soul and they only have two destinations where they can go. It's either up or down, it's either north or south. And you yeah. better be caring about them more than anybody else because they're about to enter into eternity, you right. know? Yeah. So, so basically I can just say this, that, that family reached out to me that way. And then they actually reached out to me and said that their son and his seven year old daughter got baptized. Right. Oh, wow. And and they sent me the, the, little, the video clip. That's and I remember reaching out to my producing partner, Rick Irvin, calling him up. Like I would, you know, I was choked up. And I said, Rick, you're not gonna believe this. This and this, and this happened. Like two little babies, like on the phone, just giggling yeah. and laughing and you know, and we're like, something good. Rolling said, around in the sandbox. Yeah. You did something good. That is amazing. Um, it's amazing how God can use a movie or even music song to touch somebody's yeah. heart, you know, oh, to yeah. bring him and draw him. In. And you know what? There's um or a dream you know, or a vision. I mean, or it's a dream amazing. or vision. Yes. And there's a radio station. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of it. It's called K Love. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Everyone knows. That, I yeah. used to listen to that all the time. And you know, a lot of times God spoke to me when I was younger, growing up. Um, God spoke to me through a lot of those songs. And so even just the movie in itself can be so um, inspiring to someone's heart. It, it's it's almost like food that feeds a yeah. person's mm -hmm. soul. And God, can, if God can speak through a donkey, yeah. okay, like he did in scripture, he can speak through anything. You know, uh, he can speak through music. He can speak through a billboard, you know, and just like yeah. your experience that you had with that, I believe, angel, okay, um, who showed up at the, at when you were at probably my lowest, uh, your lowest. Okay. Yeah. When you had hit a brick wall yeah. and, and, and basically what happened is that you realized, okay, I've been trying to do this on my own and I've been trying to take care of everything on my own. Yeah. You know what, God, I give up. Okay. Mm -hmm. if you are really there then do something, you know, right. if, if yeah. you really are the creator and you are the only God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the only God, then do something. Yeah. And boom. That's when God shows up. And a lot of times that's what he's doing in people's lives. Even those who have denied him, those who turn away from yeah. him, he lets them go on just like a father would or a mom. Yeah. He will let them go on and try to fix things themselves until they yeah. get to the end of the road and they hit a brick wall. And that's mm -hmm. a lot, you know, that's what happens with those who are alcoholics, those who are drug addicts. Yeah. You have to hit that brick wall before you realize you're yeah. done. You can't do it. Lo you need a to yeah. help you um, to fix your life. And only Jesus can help fix your life. He's right. the only one. There is no other way. He is right. no way. Right. The way, the truth, and the life. And there's a, a, the prodigal son story. Yes. I mean, it, it all goes back to that. I mean, we are all prodigals in some form or another, you know, and just like listening to the cackling hens on the view and like all of these awful, you know, platforms where these, these, these awful like derelict shrews are just, you know, voicing their opinions. You know, people who should have no platform. And the reason why I mentioned that is because I have these awesome, I love the Daily Wire. That's my favorite political platform with Ben Shapiro and Michael Knowles and Andrew Clavin and Matt Knowles, Matt Walsh. I would su suggest for all the viewers who are watching right now to go over to that because that is probably the most coherent and, um, uh, you know, like uh, honest uh, platform for news that you can actually watch. So I don't know if I was led by the spirit to say that I kind of went around the world there, but uh, yeah, whatever you said led me to to to, to, to lead lead everybody to that channel. Like it's it's awesome. Amen. Amen. Yeah. There's a so, lot of actors that are turning down big roles, yeah. and they don't even care about the money to prove their point. Yes. No. That is amazing. I'm, I'm glad you said that. That's amazing to hear. I'm glad you said that because the Daily Wire that I just mentioned came out with a film where one of the actors, one of the lead actresses, was a Disney actress, and they totally canceled her uh, because of her political views. And now she is a lead character in the new Daily Wire movie uh, that they're making. They're making like three simultaneously. But um, it's interesting. The left thinks that they are going to censor i mean god says your sin will always be found out you know what i mean like all throughout history murderers don't the majority of murderers get found out i mean like don't don't like sure. don't they like you know it's the same thing with the left and all of this like propaganda and stuff their sins will be found out people are coming out with movies 
I'm sure when the when the Republicans come out with the controversial controversial movies that um, expose these political oligarchs that they're going to be thrown into prison for tax invasion or something like which always happens. It's the only thing they can do. But you know what? People are going to stand up. And I believe Hollywood is going to be called Hollywood very soon because you know what? People are sick and tired. Like I said in the last podcast, sick and tired of these these. Uh, actors using their platform to push their stupid politics. I think yep. people are sick of it. You know, it's funny you say that because I remember old Hollywood. That's what I love. I mentioned that in the last podcast, didn't I not? The, yeah. the, the, the evolution between the Academy Awards from 1940s yes. till mm-hmm. now where their hum- their humbleness just deteriorated all throughout the generations. Yes. And, and the thing was back then, you, you didn't know their personal life. You didn't know their personal agenda. Right. So right. When, you, when you saw them, when you saw them interviewed, a lot of a lot of them were just calm and cool, and you know they, they just got a glimpse of who they were. You just got a glimpse. You didn't yeah. know how where they stood on different issues right. and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And, right. and to me, it's all I love that. I love that because when you watch the movie, I didn't think about how they acted or reacted towards a certain thing. I just yeah. watched and I, you know, dove into that movie with that character and I loved it. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately nowadays, these, these individuals, these actors who are coming out and they're being so vocal and they're just basically, they're showing themselves who they are. I love mystique. Mm-hmm. I love, that yeah. movie. you know, let me just watch a movie. Cause right. otherwise then I, I remember what, you know, what activist movie you were doing and I don't honestly, it just it detracts from right, right. That's a, that's a great point, brother. You know what the leftists do? All they do is they put all these one phony one liners in your faces. Uh, you're all you know, you're like these crazy catchphrases that are gonna be repetitive for a season for maybe nine months, and it, you know, and and, and like and, and in the same breath, you've got people over here like us who are actually making real sub substantive, co- you know, you know, um, content, mm-hmm. you know, something with any kind of substance. And um, at the end of the day, I believe that the, you know, if we're going to go along with their narrative, the whole evolution of atheistic, you know what, mm-hmm. let's let the, let's brawl it out and let the, um, what is it, the survival of the fittest? Because you know what, if you, we're going to go by your standard leftist, you crazy liberal fascists, we will play that game too. The survival of the fittest is going to be the people who stand on truth. So you know what? The joke's on you. We get the last laugh, a holes. Sorry, Vanessa. I'm sorry. You can edit that out if you want. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, this society is accepting of it unless we stick up. Yeah, right. that's right. I, I agree with that. It, there's a boldness that it, you know God is raising up an army in these last mm-hmm. days. And this army is an army that is a combination of actors, singers, dancers, artists, um, teachers, pastors. Um, and I want to also include uh, Jewish believers as well, because me as a Jewish believer, the way I feel is that it's important for Jewish believers and Christians to come a lo- uh, alongside. Oh, women. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. girl. That's why I love the Daily Wire because you have yes. you the have reason I feel that way it is I feel that it is it's going to be it's the one new man basically okay Jewish believers and Christians alike is coming together it's the one new man there's an explosion of God's glory and oh, that's yes. basically oh, going yes. back to the biblical times where you had both Jews and back then they were called Gentiles but when they came into the kingdom they were Gentile Christians or uh, believers Christian believers, believers but yeah. you saw they had such fellowship and there was such power and authority back then. Nobody starved. Nobody went without. It's because they were a community of believers walking together in Christ as one. And so George, I want you to, I want you to talk about just for a second. um, And I want you to talk about two things, you and your wife, when you talk about what you do see in Hollywood that may be changing um, in reference to God bringing believers around you guys, uh, for fellowship. And then also you mentioned to me the other day when we were in fellowship, just talking about today's broadcast, um, a Jewish man that blessed you. Do you mind talking about that? Oh, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Like I said, 
to, to just start from the very beginning, mm -hmm. this project has been blessed from the word go. Yeah. Um, I didn't know, I didn't know how it was going to get done. Mm -hmm. I just knew that my reasoning for getting it done was so strong mm -hmm. that that was it, which right. means I just trusted God and I said, listen, you lead the way. And that was it. I mean, my conversations were very, very simple, a lot, but simple. It's like, Lord, lead me, tell me what to do. And um, I remember when we were looking for money, as, as you all know, it's like, you know, the hardest thing is to raise money mm -hmm. for a movie and whatnot. So uh, it just so happened that I reached out to my, you know, I was looking to, to get funding through every means possible. And then eventually I went back to my high school buddies and I reached out to my one buddy, Andy, and he was the first. And I said, Andy, listen, his name's Andy Geller. I love him to life. And, and I said to him, I go, Andy, I said, listen, I wrote a script and I send it to you. You know, if you're interested, I'm looking to, to bring out a few executive producers, blah, blah, blah. And he goes, sure, sure, sure. sure just send it to me. I, I don't think he even read it, to be honest with you. I might be wrong. But it's like, he's like, hey, here's some money. You know, he basically turns around and gives me $25,000. And he goes, look, wow. I, can, I can afford to lose this. You know, I hope this helps. And I was like, Andy, are you kidding me? This is fantastic. The first money in is the hardest. Right. You know? And then, wouldn't you know, there's a, there's a picture of there, up there that I have that's from high school. And there's literally... One standing, one kneeling. One standing, one kneeling. One standing, one kneeling. Mm -hmm. two wow. gentlemen, the two gentlemen who both put in money were above and below each other. Right? Wow. So, so I reached out to my other buddy, Sung Lee. And Sung, both you and Andy, I'll never I'll never forget you guys because what you did for me, never. Yeah. Um, isn't it, people don't do. Sung turns around and He's he read the script because he said he was going to this really much. He mm -hmm. was a one from Yeah, he's in and Singapore I, too. Yeah, he's in Singapore, and and I literally he put in seventy five thousand. Whoa! So so, and you know, I'm just I'm sharing what is possible because God touches hearts. Yes. Yeah. And that's it. When it's from God, yes. God is the one that makes it happen. We can do the work. And we can be the hands to try to put things out there. But God, he's working behind the scenes and he brings it all together. It's like these puzzle pieces that he starts to put together. Did you notice that about your movie? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And, and Andy, Andy is Jewish, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it may be oh, he's Jewish. All that, right. that, that, was, that was why you brought this up. Because right. we've got a lot of people, whether it's Jewish or non-Jewish, whether it's yeah. you know Messianic Jewish. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter. They're all coming together because. Exactly. Wow. I was movie. just going to say that. Yes. Brother. Right. Listen, yes. so this, this film, I don't know if Leora told you about this film that we're doing with David Hevener, which we would love to get you a part of. In fact, I'm, I'm his co-star in the TV series. It's a biblical crime series. We call CSI meets the book of revelation. Everything that he wrote four years ago is literally coming to pass. Yeah. And in fact, you would be a really great main character. I have someone in mind that I'm sure that he would, you know, um, agree with me but you know it's really interesting that everything that you're saying right now is literally coming to to pass and it's just uh i don't know it's pretty remarkable well i just want to just finish off by saying that not only did they put the money in what happened was when you know i told them i said listen i can't guarantee people getting their money back you know because you have to be up front with everybody i said i can't guarantee it. I will do everything I can. Right. And I remember when we, when we started getting money in because we had a great distribution company. Yeah. Okay. And um, once once money started rolling in, I started reaching out to these guys and say, hey, I got your money. And do you know both those guys turned around and said, I don't want it. Wow. Um, they just walked away from it. And, and I said, no, no, no. I said, that wasn't the deal. Mm -hmm. And they said, George, we wanted to do this for you. So talk about selflessness. Yes. Talk uh, about yeah, absolutely. God putting yeah. the right people in your path. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, then, and then there's another story. I will tell you this. Please, a, please. I mean, this third individual, I, this is another beautiful story. 
it's Athena, this this amazing businesswoman. Her name's Athena Bulgaridis, mm -hmm. and um, she came in out of the blue. We were we were Church. we needed yeah we needed some more funding. I mean, we raised a lot more money than that, but mm -hmm. my point is that was the beginning. Right. Then what happened was we there was uh, I was trying to raise some money at the church, and the, and the church was really great. They were nice people, and um, unfortunately, you know, what happened was that she was not there the day that I gave a, uh, like an eight minute pitch. The next week, the gentleman who allowed me to speak and and during coffee hour, and you know I said I, I'll keep it eight minutes, and really, and I kept my word. And then I remember he the next week he said to me, "Hey, how'd it go?" And I said, well, you know, people were, you know, they, they said they'll pray for me a lot, which was mm -hmm. nice. And, and, and then yeah. uh, he, mm -hmm. there was a lady sitting at a table a little bit further. And he goes, let me introduce you to somebody. Come here. And and he took me over to Athena. Mm -hmm. And it was her sister was there, too, and beautiful women. And Athena goes, I, I want to I see the trailer. I want to see it. And I said, okay. So we went outside in the hallway because it was a little bit, a bit loud. And I played it. And I remember Athena got so like teary eyed. Wow. And she goes, I'm going to help you. Do you know that evening she put in $5,000 in our Indiegogo campaign? Wow. Yeah, out of nowhere. Just, and I, and I was like, thank That's you. Awesome. I mean, it was just, these are all blessings. It only gets yeah. better. The story gets better. She, yeah. There was a message next to it. If, there's, if you need any more, let me know. That's awesome. And I reached out to her and I said, Athena, I said, listen, thank you. I said, I'd love to see if I can talk to you mm -hmm. about becoming an a, 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 a executive producer on the film. This is yeah. what I'm looking to offer you. Would you like to discuss this? And we met at a restaurant. Wow. As I'm walking up to the table, there is a five, another $5,000 check sitting on my plate. And I'm sitting there going, this does not happen. This does not happen. It's all, it was all God. And, and let me tell you, she is incredible. What a beautiful woman. And, yeah. you know, and it got better than that. I'm just telling you, these are just stories. These are some of the stories that how God literally provided. Right. Well, we have a little time, brother. I mean, this is really encouraging me. And I'll talk about that um, before we get off. This is really encouraging me and anybody that's watching now, anybody that's going to be watching this, that's trying to go down this road or whatever it is that's in your life. You know, yeah. if you're having a hard time facing a hard time financially, um, physically, whatever it is, we want to encourage you today to know that God sees you. He knows where you are. And so, George, if you want to share some more, please do share some more because it's really, really encouraging me. Um, and also, Sister Christina, I love your shirt. Um, can you guys send me a shirt? I I, I want to see your shirt. Isn't that the heavenly? Uh, ah! Nice. Hold oh on. I'm sorry, it's hard to see. Um, it's yeah, amazing. get it, girl. I love it. Oh, you know what? I would be so grateful if you guys would send me one. And, you know, um, however I can advertise. Look, I don't have a lot right now, but that's coming. Listen, but if you send us shirts. Can, however yeah. I can help you with that. Uh, Vanessa oh, is an you. artist and she could probably even maybe draw that for you or paint it for you. You should see her paintings, but wow. Oh, you got a cut too. We Look got, at that. You oh, know, that. <sighs> so, so basically, basically just to give you a heads up on this, it's funny. When we were, it's interesting how, how things happen. When we were making the movie, I never, my focus was just on making a movie. Mm -hmm. It wasn't on ancillary items or nothing. And then after it was all said and done, I'm like, wait a minute. There, there was somebody who reached out to us because we have a painting in the movie. It's called Jesus of St. Peter, the Keys to the Kingdom. Okay. And and I can tell you, it's actually, I don't know if you can see it. See that pillow that back behind there? you right there? Is that the one? Yeah. Can it's you grab it? Can you grab it so the viewers will be able to see it? Yeah, oh, Christina. Yeah, there you go. So. Oh, look at that. Oh my gosh, that is gorgeous. I love that. There is a gentleman named Michael wow. Rubino. We we hired him to make this painting specifically for the movie. And and I remember, you know, it just blew me away. This this he's incredibly talented. Again, Michael Rubino, incredibly talented. And um so what's his name? Michael Rubino. Michael Rubino, okay. Yeah. 
great guy, just very talented. And and I remember um, he basically, you know, he, he made the painting. And then we started getting some people inquiring mm-hmm. on, you know, hey, where can I get a copy of that? And I, and I kept saying to people, hey, listen, I'm sorry, but, you know, it was an original painting. It was made specifically for Heavenly Deposits, so sorry. Well, what happened was eventually it's as if God gave me the idea, finally, you know, woke me up and said, wait a minute, you know, do this. You can get this going out there to people, you know, get the rights to it and, and see if people want to buy it. That's what I did. I, I started by that, and now it's grown into a whole website with T-shirts, hoodies, mugs, everything. So, What's that we just, website? I'm going to oh, write it in here. It's heavenlydeposit.com. Oh, okay. Well, hello. And, and this one, this is our Let Go, Let God mug because in the movie, Barry Van Dyke tells me to let go and let God. And right. it's probably, it's, it's one of the best scenes in there for that, you know, leading people that way, you know, and saying, hey, listen, mm-hmm. don't, don't be the guy to try to handle everything, you know? And his, yeah. and that was the scene. And um, well, we just, I just launched these probably, we just launched them about maybe a week and a half ago. Okay. You know? Wonderful. So, oh, I love that. Uh, I got to get one of those shirts. Um, Vanessa, you're, you're, sorry. you're singing. There you sorry. go. I was just we saying, well, well, my friend and my brother, if you ever need a singer or a painter to help you with your scripts, I'm your gal. Thank you. That's my main thing. I'm a, I'm a writer, singer, and painter. So if you ever need graphics, or you know, music. I've got amazing producers or a writer. I'm there for you. I'm happy to do it for free. You just let me know. No, we don't. We don't, we don't work for free. That's the funny thing. That's with, right. With, with That's people, right. with people with heavenly deposit, I might not. I reached out to people. I like I said, I've been in the business since 1991. Never did I ask for a favor. This is where I pulled all the favors, and, and people were so incredibly kind to work. For a lesser rate, mm-hmm. yeah. But they did get something, you know. And that was yeah. and that was the first movie, so maybe yeah. God will the next one. We're gonna bump this up if you know he did it the first time. Who knows? Maybe a second, you know, Heavenly Deposit Two might be around. But. You know what? Listen, brother. After my grandmother died, I am happy to to pick up and leave wherever. Live like a gypsy. I've been living like a gypsy for fifteen years. I'm just here, there, and everywhere. If you need an actor, a singer, a writer, a painter. I will do it for free because I believe in the cause and I believe that God is doing big things. And I look at the bigger picture and you know what? I don't need anything in return. I just want to be a blessing to the kingdom, you know? You're awesome. I've- you know, actually, um, we are a part of, as she was talking about, uh, the last evangelist. And, you know, I play, go figure, a cop. And so does she. Uh, she plays um, captain. Wait, are you captain? I forget. I think lieutenant. Um, I'm an F. FBI agent who busts the underground church during right. the tribulation period. Right. It's a CSI meets the book of revelation type of film. Yeah. Awesome. And so, um, anyway, I, I, hmm? do you guys have a trailer or something or yes, yes. A yes. We have an amazing premiere. Yeah. And, and, and in uh-huh. fact, if you want to be a part of it, because David, our co-star and producer and writer and trusts, uh, Lior and I with the casting and stuff, I helped with casting. And if you came on board, I think it would be a really great asset. And I think that he would be totally happy if you said that you want to be a part of this. Uh, thank, thank you. Well, let's let's talk after. I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, because I want to show you guys. Totally. Something. So we're gonna um, we're gonna go ahead and cut this uh, short here in a minute. Uh, Vanessa, go ahead and grab one of your paintings for me, okay? Yeah. But I wanted to ask you guys, is there anything else that you want to talk about in reference to this movie? And also, if you have any other um, movies that you are currently in need of help with, or and what I mean by like financially, you know, if you want to put the word out there, if you are filming right now, or what you may have that God has maybe put on your heart to film in the future. That's funny. Um you know, it's it's great. I am not looking for any money right now. I'm not we're not filming anything at the moment. Mm-hmm. And that's why I don't even try to reach out to people for any assistance because um I'm still trying to get people, you know, I'm still re- recouping right. the people who put money into heavenly deposit. I'm still yes. focusing on getting them paid. So we've yes. got other people paid back and, and I'm still working on that. Okay. Um but but I am getting, you know, kind of antsy to do something. I just have mm-hmm. I do have a, another uh, a great lady. Her name's Wendy Nelson, who mm-hmm. will be working on something together. 
and um, great lady. Um, just sees things through. You can tell that she's very thorough, and uh, yes. I respect her very much. So, and so okay. it's one individual. And yeah, um, we had a great composer too. Oh my God! All right, I have my painting. Oh, hold on one second, Vanessa. Yeah, go ahead, brother. Yeah, we, we were blessed, as you as you said. We had incredible talent. I mean, mm -hmm. put it this way: we had. Um, uh, let's let's start off with first of all, uh, what's his name? Uh, Peter Jason is in the movie. I mean, mm -hmm. if you look at these people, you're gonna be like, I've seen them because they are they're incredible talents. Ellen mm -hmm. Joyce is in the movie. Um, you've got Barry Van Dyke. You've got uh, okay. John Savage. Mm -hmm. I've always wanted to work with John Savage. Yeah, me too. And, and so, so you know, having him on board was a blessing. Uh, let's see, Ellen Joyce, Peter Jason, uh, John Savage, Barry Van Dyke. Frank Ashmore, who was in the airplane one and two, yeah. and he was on the TV series B. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, and then also, um, who was it? Uh, Benjamin on Young Girl. He's in the God's Not Dead series. Oh, nice. Right. Oh, uh, yeah. I actually have a friend that I interviewed. I host a testimony channel on YouTube and Faith and Veiled Network called the New Creation True Life Testimonies, and one of my First get my I had two first guests Frank Turek and then uh, doc, uh, Detective Jay Warner Wallace from Cold Case Detectives, oh. and he was my second. He was actually in that that movie God's Not Dead too, and you should watch it because he's actually got a really great testimony. He you was an that. atheist. God's not, God's not dead too. Yeah, and the third yeah. one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, all great, all great. That is amazing. Oh, I look forward to anything that you're doing, and also I'm available as well. Um, yeah, yeah, but. All right, uh, so we have a sister. Hold on one second, Seth. Okay. We have a sister that's asking a question from Little Pink uh, Casa, and she says, "Where can they, as Christians, actors, submit to George uh, future casting?" Uh, it's funny. Um, I would I would say you could probably reach out to me on either my LinkedIn, you know, George Vincent there, or my uh, my Facebook. Okay. I just said at the moment, okay. yeah, at the moment, I'm not, I'm not, I don't have anything specific yet. Okay. To, to, to do, but, um, well, oh yeah, but no, that's just, that's just, uh, stuff I'm working on the side, you okay. know, wow. and stuff like that. That's great. But that's more of like, I'm interviewing, you know, say, um, like just, just people in the industry. It's, it's a show tailored to help the indie independent filmmaker. Yes. So that's what I'm working on right now. Okay. You know, well, and, and I'm interviewing people who are in the industry, whether it's a casting director, whether it's you know um, uh, directors, etc. Mm -hmm. And um, so we've got some, we've got like four people right now that we've interviewed, and, and uh, okay. we're going to be releasing it. A dear friend of mine, Bob Barrowall. Mm -hmm. He's we we've been working on a couple of projects together. It's a project. It's called Enter the Diamond. I'm looking this way because the poster's that way. Um, okay. And and we're doing a bunch of other different films together, uh, whether they're shorts, they're they're animated things. So we're working on that. Okay. Which, uh, she's like, show them your mug. <laughs> so, <laughs> here, this is this is Enter the Diamond. It's so funny. Nice. Right. And oh, then, love. that's nice. so cute. I love it. You know? And then there's it. this gentleman right here. Um, I don't oh yeah. Okay. 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 So. He's fantastic. Nice. I mean, it, it's nice. like all, it's just, um, it's a bittersweet story, which mm -hmm. I'm, I'm probably not going to get into right now. But anyway, uh, he, well, you know, okay. The lead, the lead gentleman it, right yeah. here. So he's the lead good guy. I'm the lead bad guy, basically. Okay. And uh, right. sadly, Devon is his name. Mm -hmm. Devon Russell. He, uh, he ended up passing away. And oh. uh, it's just, okay. it's just, a, it's sad. He was a amazing human being, mm -hmm. and um, you know the love and and just the it was just it was just sad how you know quickly he went you know but but we did go we did have a chance to to go to Comic Con together and to okay. you know have a great time because of Bob you know we were at Comic Con for Enter the Diamond and uh, right you know he got I got to see him being happy you know doing his thing and signing yeah. autographs and everything so it was just it was wonderful. But it was too good for him to go. Oh, uh, yeah. That is met. strong. That's sad. Yep. Yeah. Sad. He's looking oh, over you now. He's looking down over you and he's like, yeah. go get him, George. Go get him, Christina. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, this is this is wonderful. Yeah. Christina, did you want to say something? Yeah. Go ahead. 
Okay. Uh, he, he, when you did that interview in um, Georgia, remember? Oh, Atlanta. Atlanta, Atlanta Live. Atlanta Live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, no, we, we, we went nice. we traveled everywhere to get the word out on the film. Yeah. And, um, yeah. uh, we were over at we were over at this one cathedral. Boy, that was amazing. Uh, word of Faith Cathedral mm -hmm. with uh, Bishop Dale Bronner. Mm -hmm. It's a mega church. I mean, we can sit, we can do this mm -hmm. another time. But, not, but let me right. just tell you, as far as how God opened up all these amazing doors for us. Mm -hmm. Wow. Just, you know, to, to, to get Atlanta alive and, uh, you know, only like during the the only time we could do it mm -hmm. and right. this, this, like to fit us in and this came from the kosagi brothers they introed us to, to get to get in there and they they took wow. us so rick and i flew out the same week we had our movie in a film festival in georgia at the mm -hmm. same time we ended up getting the word of faith on the only basically the only night available to to, to basically screen at a mega church Amen. Hallelujah. That happened. I mean, that, that is awesome. So, and I, and I kept praying, asking God. I was like, "Look, please fill our trip. Let you know. Let us let us make it worthwhile yeah. to just yeah. touch hearts and yeah. any day, souls any and minds. Yeah. And we even oh, had um. It's called the real level up. We had we were we had a radio interview too with some wow. amazing individuals, Robin. You know, etc. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. So yeah, that's yeah. awesome. There's a lot. There's a lot of yeah. great things that a lot of doors I've got opened up for us. Yeah, nice. That is just amazing. It's Christina, so do you have anything to say to women out there that are um, yeah. acting or come on, sister, speak up. Speak. <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot. I'm a makeup artist. I'm not an actor. <laughs> She's an amazing makeup I artist. I love your eyebrows, girl. I mean, seriously, I drive all the way or fly all the way where you are so you can do my eyebrows. <laughs> Beautiful girl, I love it. Maybe, maybe you can be our makeup artist for the TV series. I would go. love that. I would love there that. There you go. Yeah, and for my movie script. Yeah, she has an awesome movie script, by the way. Oh, I can't nice. wait. Awesome. Nice. Can't wait. Awesome. Yeah, Robert, movie um, script. I interviewed Robert uh, Kolar last uh, Sunday, and I just, I mean, an, an, another amazing story. And this is why I think we should all be coming together, actors, producers. Yes. You know, coming Cir together. Cir circles are getting smaller and smaller in this day and age. To figure sure. out how we can work together and, and for the kingdom and making mm -hmm. these movies and whatever, yeah. you know. But I interviewed him, and um, he has an amazing testimony. Yeah, he does. I have his daughter coming back on, as well as Robert, and mm -hmm. uh, their granddaughter, in March, March the 13th at three mm -hmm. o'clock here, uh, it'll be on a Sunday, but um, just an amazing testimony. You, you have to hear his testimony, how he came to the Lord and how God used him to make his movies, his current ones, and then the one that he's trying to make now. Yeah. But he just came out and he's like, yeah, he would like to take on my movie script. And I was like, oh, nice. what? Nice. <laughs> you know, so that's a blessing. Um, I'm also waiting to try to get in touch with Oliver Stone. Uh, somebody's supposed to be connecting me with him as well. Yeah, but, that's, that'll be know, great I, for sure. I am just humbled as to however God is going to do this like you, George. It's like, you know, I just want to watch and just see how God operates and how he's going to move with this. You know, I want to see him like blow my mind because like you, I've gone through poverty, growing up, living on the streets, living in foster home all my life. I just yeah. have like this Job, uh, Joseph, uh, Esther type of lifestyle, you know, and um, wow, I've been, Joseph and Esther, me too. That's so funny. I've been, that, yeah, I've been wow. hearing God tell me basically, you know, I'm bringing you out of this and I'm bringing you into something new. And so I am ready for this uh, refreshing. I'm ready for this new yeah. thing that God has for me. I am just, you know how you just like at the, at that wall and you keep butting your head at that wall and you're like, God, I'm ready. I'm ready. You know, and God's like, okay, it's coming. It's coming. Yeah. Just be still and know that I am God. And so while he's doing his thing, I am putting my hands to the plow and I am working and I have been tilling the land for so many years yeah. in a special sense, you know. Harvest so is upon us for sure. Your movie has really, really encouraged me. I cannot tell you how much it encouraged me. I mean, I was weeping when you were in that bank and when you had that experience with that, I believe in angel, you know. Yeah. Um, I'm so humbled to to know you and your wife, Christina. You are just so beautiful. I can't wait to meet you in person. I'm she's just better half. Huh? For sure. She's the better half. She better be, brother, because you know what? Uh -huh. I'm law enforcement too, ex-law enforcement. 
<laughs> you better like watch it. But you know, um, I'm just very humbled that you would even come on to my program. You and your wife to be a part of this. I'm yeah, just, that was really awesome for you to take yeah, the time for us. That's really, really, really happy to meet you guys. Yes. You too, I'm excited. Uh, you too. Um, Vanessa, go ahead, take it away. I want you to see her yeah. uh, paintings. And then okay. when we're oh, done, oh, okay, okay, sorry. When we're done, don't go anywhere, you guys, because we're going to go so, behind the scenes and we're going to show you some of the drawings for the super. Okay. okay. I, I got to tell you, I have so many testimonies behind every painting. I stopped painting for 10 years. My dad told me and prophesied that I'd be a big, biblical paint, painter. And I said, no way. I laughed at him didn't know Christ. And then years later, I prayed for years that God would bring this to me. And I have a whole testimony. The fact that you're Greek reminds me of my favorite political commentator, Eric Metaxas, who is also Greek. Amazing. And, and, and this painting actually yep. came from his testimony. So this is Christ, the living water and the pearl of great price. I can't tell if you can see that. Yes, we can see yeah. it. Absolutely. Hold it back a little bit further. Hold it back a little. There you go. Right there. Perfect. Wow. So that's, that's part, beautiful. So the these fish I have to or these fish I have to finish. But this is going to be the kingdom of heaven, Christ's living water and the pearl of great price. Beautiful. Then I did a painting of my co-star and myself for the TV series. We're doing the look at this. Um, look at that. That's sorry. awesome. I love it. That's awesome. So nice job, Vanessa. Yes. Thank you. And then his yes. daughter which is another testimony because my grandmother died and his daughter reminds me so much of my grandmother. And before she died, the Lord said, paint, paint their daughter. And I started to paint her. Oh, wow. um, and so I'm, I'm like working Very on four, nice. four projects like simultaneously. Yes. But if you ever need a singer or a painter, my friend, my brother, you just, my sister, you just let me know. And I'm happy to, to do that. You know? That sounds wonderful. This is a great connection. Thank you so much, Vanessa. Thank so you. So excited. Laura. Yeah, I believe that God is doing something. You know, I think that his his believers are coming out of the woodworks. I believe Hollywood have a, 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 a you know a revolution and be, become Hollywood. I really do believe that God is going to use people because I think that people are sick of listening to these stupid Hollywood you know uh, platform people who are just running their mouths and flapping their gums about their politics and no one wants to hear them anymore. Their ratings are going down. So I think it's time for us to to raise our mouths and yeah. be the the you know the, the the mouthpiece for the nations and uh, let the Lord shine through us for such a time as this. Amen for that. Uh, we have another thing, question I from. I'm sorry. Go ahead, sister. I do want to say one thing, if I may, uh, backtrack into you what you asked me as, as a female, as a woman, mm -hmm. how I feel. Um, basically, I was telling George like we. Uh, when before we were filming and during the film, we hit some snags, mm -hmm. snags that we thought were so major as, for example, uh, certain locations and certain actors, mm -hmm. the, the certain actors that we wanted that we thought for sure we would get, they ended up yeah. passing away. Uh, certain locations, same thing. Yes. Um, we thought were the best locations and George was like so distraught and I was like, you know what? I have to be strong for both of us. I had to try to lift him up because he was wearing yeah, all those hats as writer, director, producer, actor, all this, mm -hmm. you know, master person, everything. He was, he was basically doing everything. And I'm like, listen, I don't know, but I have this good feeling that we're going to get something better. Don't worry. So I kept, even though inside I was like dying too. And I was like, oh my God, I have to like encourage him even more. So he did mm -hmm. that and kept going and we ended up yes getting all these actors that we actually wanted that's awesome. and all these locations that were better than the locations that we thought that would be the best wow well, i love the fact that you're so supportive of your husband because you know being a christian that like you know to, to believe in him. yeah yeah you, you, you know you you know that encouraging your husband doesn't mean you know that encouraging your husband and his gifts does not mean that he's imputing inferiority on you because you have different roles, you know, and so you guys are going to equal each other out. And, you know, I'm going to pray for you guys that, you know, the Lord continues to strengthen your awesome marriage and just be there for each other right. as believers, as actors, as entertainers, as, you know, people in the kingdom. I mean, seriously, we have to, Sometimes I forget that I'm a child of God. Sometimes I forget that I am an heir to the kingdom. I forget that the royal blood of heaven flows through my veins. I forget I'm a princess. How does a princess act? How does a child of the king behave? And how do they live their lives? And you know what? And you know, we need to start in this day of an age 
where I believe Christ is coming very soon yeah. to put, be boots to the ground Christians, pull up our bootstraps and say, who are we in Christ? I think yeah. it's as simple as that. Who, where are the Davids and the Esters in this world right now? Yeah. I, I just want to jump in and say something real fast. I can't, I can't not say this. Yes. Um, just want to let everyone know out there that this movie would have not been done if I didn't have my producing partner, Rick Irvin. Now, Rick, I mentioned this before, he, between he and I, we moved this thing forward. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, we met on a different project where that project didn't go anywhere. He wants, at the time, he was like, hey, you know, I'm doing a lot of, um, you know, horror movies. And he's like, I want to change. I want to do like a wow. And And I said, that's interesting. I said, I'm writing a faith script. And I told him, he goes, we got to make that. So if yeah. it wasn't for Rick, yeah. we, literally, the hats that he wore were amazing. I mean, like, we were to split the work right in half right. just busted our butts you know mm -hmm. uh, so rick is huge and then i cannot well, shout out to you rick yeah, yeah. <laughs> shout out to you have you and, ever worked uh, and, with oh go ahead sorry about yeah that. No, i was gonna say and our lead actress yes amazing yeah. christina Dent. i mean she kathy me. yeah, yeah. Kat, <laughs> kathleen koshi played my mom yeah. amazing mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. and then my buddy in the movie mike magical who played my best friend? Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, he is, he is best basically his <laughs> best friend, and and he was the one who 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 you know when you watch the movie, that's all true. Right. Wow. So he played himself, and uh, you know, there's so many so many other things. I know I can't yeah. bring everybody up. Yeah. But, yeah. The DP was amazing. Everybody was just terrific. But I have to bring up Rick because, like I said, without Rick, this movie would have never been done. Wow, awesome. Yeah, awesome. And that's the part of, see, I believe that where God starts taking every little puzzle, you know, and he puts the pieces together until you see the bigger piece of the, or the bigger puzzle, basically. And so like you were saying, just like when you guys were thinking there were supposed to be certain actors or locations, but God had a different plan, Yeah. you know, and uh, the scripture, you know, in reference to that, but thank God that we can submit our lives to him and we can say, you know, Lord, you just take it from here, you know, yeah. what's yeah. Song, um, Jesus take the wheel, you know, okay. I like that. I like that. Jesus take the wheel. So shout out to you, Rick. Thank you for what you did. Um, not only for George, but you helped to produce a movie um, that basically has brought people into the kingdom, um, sure. giving their lives to Jesus Christ, baptism, oh, yeah. and you really helped so much more than you even imagine. And so I pray God's blessings upon you today. Awesome. Um, and then, Christina, is there something else that you want to say? You know, I, I truly see you as a queen. I see you as uh, Esther. Seriously, you are amazingly beautiful and strong. And, um, yeah. you know, I rec when I see a strong woman, I recognize that strong woman. Yeah. That's how we should be. And so yeah. I commend you because only a queen can take on as much as she did with you being by your husband's side and yeah. everything was going on and still absolutely still being able to say, Hey, you know, honey, it's going to be okay. You know, God's going to do this and knowing inside, you know, you were probably like, Hey God, you really there? Are you, are you doing this thing? I'm trusting you. You know, everything I'm saying yeah. is going to come to pass. And uh, the whole time God's behind the scene going, ha, 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 she just don't know what's around. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. I, I, I would get nervous my, when my boyfriend would come home a couple hours early after work, you know, I'm like, what is he doing and stuff? The fact that, you know, you guys are so strong and solid, you know what, just yes, keep your relationship Amen. tight and, and just continue to support each other. I mean, the family is, I don't know if you guys have kids. Do you guys have kids? No, no. no. Well, you know what? doesn't we matter. Have, it only, yeah, it, yeah. you know, to be a family, um, shoot, I lost you guys. I can't see you guys. Can you see me? Yeah, yeah we can see you. I, I yep. can't see you. I'm sorry. I lost your screen. Um, yeah. Basically what I'm saying is just, you know, it's, it's, it's an awesome thing to see you guys as, you know, people in the political and um, kind of like celebrity sphere, I guess, to be so open about your faith and your marriage mm -hmm. and to just keep that. The most important thing is just to be supportive of one another and show the world that the most amazing um, institution is the institution of marriage and yeah. and, and, and faithfulness. And um, it's gonna show through. Our values are gonna show through in these films that we do. And I, I really pray to the Lord right now, Father God, use us 
to work together. You know, I just pray that we will have an opportunity to be together behind the screen, on the screen, and just come together as bold, faithful Christians, boots to the ground Christians that are going to make an impact in Hollywood and turn it into Hollywood. You know, I believe in revival. Who knows if there's another revival before Christ comes? Maybe things will get so bad that he's going to come soon. But either way, he's coming soon. And we have to not just sit on our butts and we have to make a difference. I know it sounds so like progressive and cliche, but, you know, if they're trying to do it on the left and trying to, you know, change history and change reality and truth, then we need to be just as bold. And we're not as bold right now. No, I agree. I agree. Yeah. yeah. And many times, I mean, I, I feel outnumbered like everywhere I go for the same fact that everything is gearing towards yeah. you know, the other side, definitely yeah. not the holy side. Mm-hmm. And then I That's also cool. have people coming up to me and wanting to pray over me. And of course I'm gonna say yes, where other people mock when someone's doing that to me. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And I and I can feel the blessings and they and they realize from one faithful person to another. Uh, God has since the movie and even like before the movie, I feel like God has given me that discernment to know mm-hmm. between good versus evil and everything else that's going on in this world and society. Yeah. Yes. And it compels me more, even though I'm usually to myself, it compels me more to talk about it. And if I see someone that's hurting or if I see someone's asking for advice, I'm a little more open now because mm-hmm. I'm trying to help them as well. Yeah. Right before I was just a little more reserved because I shouldn't be embarrassed. I'm not embarrassed or, you know, I'm just shy and it, it gets misinterpreted otherwise. Yeah. Well, I think le- legalism in the church is pretty rampant just as much as on the other opposite end of the spectrum. No, we on the positive. What's that? Uh, I'm sorry. It's WW heavily deposit. It's oh. there's no E. Oh, oh wait, awesome. Wait, okay. what did I do? You okay. It, that's all right. It's just uh, www.heavenlydeposit.com. No E. I'm so excited to watch that movie with my family. Um, okay, oh, wait, I hope you enjoy it. Okay, hold on. I really? will. I just want to make sure I got this right. I, I don't have, I got to get some uh, contacts. So <laughs> sorry about that. Right. All right. Then I, like I said earlier, when you blessed me with the things that you said, and it just directly tied to my grandmother who just passed away, who was the best person in my life, your movie is going to have the same effect to the point where people are going to question their mortality. And this is the perfect timing. You have no idea the impact that your movies make. Like I said, Jesus says he leaves the 99 for the one. And I completely agree agree with that, you know, that, um, yes, I would love to see every person be saved. But you know what? I also believe that you can leave, you can abandon everything that seems important to the person who is the most needy. And I think your film is going to do just that, especially right now in my family. And it's not just my family. It's all the families. You never know what people are going through in their lives. I mean, just one phrase, like the phrase you said earlier, better now that you're here. I mean, that, that is such, such a significant phrase in my life. It, it was like a, a two yeah. second phrase, you know? So yeah. you have no idea the impact that you're making. Just continue doing uh, what right. you're doing. Really? Right. Here we go. I just want to make sure I get this done. Correctly. Thank you, Vanessa. I'm not a fast yeah. typer, so sorry about that. That's okay. Right. There we go. I think I got that. Um, Nor am I. There there it is. <laughs> sorry Perfect. about that. Okay, well, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. Is there anything that you guys want to say before we get off to the audience? Um, anything at all? Yeah, I think I think people, you know, this is something that I've learned. You know, there's whatever you decide to do, whatever you are working on, whether it's anything I'm saying, you know, so you're making a film because that's the only thing I can talk about, you know, or being an actor. Yeah. You know, there's going to be so many things that come into your life that will hinder you, right? Mm-hmm. And it's so easy to sit there. Yeah. When you don't have God, it's very easy to get all distraught. Mm-hmm. And why is this happening? And blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And you're focusing on this when you should be focusing on that. Because yeah. that is your goal. What your goal is, is where you want to go. Mm-hmm. And this is from the Bible. You know, if, if you know, you're, you're sowing and you're reaping, right? So you're mm-hmm. planting. And, yes. you know, the birds come in and they take take the seed. And if you're sitting there trying to stop each bird, you're stopping from planting. Mm-hmm. Right. My point is, my point is anything that comes up, don't sit there and, and, you know, sit there and get all 
distraught about it. Yeah. Go forward. Don't focus here. Focus on that. What is your goal? And because you have trust that God is leading you, have that trust. Yeah. Go forward. Yes. Wearing the armor of God always. Yeah, that's right. Come on, sister. Say that again. Say it louder. Wearing the armor of God always. Yes. Yeah. No, and, and it's so true because you know it, it's some things become a cliche, but why do things become a cliche because they're true? They mm -hmm. become cliches because they're true. You know, a lot of people say, Oh, yes. the armor of God every morning, oh ha ha, that's a cliche. Stop saying that, focus on this, this, and that. No, no, it's true. There's a reason why it's there. The reason why it's a, a cliche because it's so emphasized. You know, for the, the same reason that God used uh, figurative speech, mm -hmm. people are like, oh, this is figurative because it's not actually realistic. No, actually, God used figurative language because he was trying to emphasize a truth. And that's yeah. the same thing with wearing the armor of God is that God gave us that for a reason. It's the reason why it's famous and the cliche is because he wants us to focus on it. And because it's true, it's just, it's lovely. It's everything that we should meditate on. And every single morning we have to read our word and make that the priority in our life. You know, and it's, 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 it's hard to do. I, 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 I fail I every day. I fail every day. I try to get up early in the morning and make that my priority. I usually end up doing other distracted things. But for the most part, I'm more blessed when I make God my priority, when prayer is number one before my feet hit the floor on the bed. And then the second thing is the Bible. And then I go out my, with, with my day and I'm blessed. And it's like, you know what? It's so simple. It's not easy, but it's no. simple. Yeah. It, yeah, agreed. I get yeah, better at reading the Bible every day too, or, or at least every other, whatever. Just... Mm -hmm make it a routine whatever that routine is yeah. right it's more you know what it's a repetition the one thing i've learned is repetition is so important so the more you do it the actually you know what the more you spend time with god the more you desire him and his presence okay true well, that's I mean, practice true. makes for another, another cliche i was an athlete most of my life and so the only way i could ever you know do well at what i did as a ballet dancer i had to practice eight hours a day six there days a week you know and if i put half as much effort into my ballet career as i did with my bible then man what an amazing christian i would be but i'm not i'm not even close to being there i i i, I send to be there i want to be there but you know god is so good to show us where our weaknesses yeah. are well, I want to say thank you guys for joining us today. For those of you that's going to be watching this program a little bit later, we want to say thank you for joining. We are End Time Kingdom Ambassadors um, with George and his beautiful wife, Christina. Um, if you want to visit uh, their website, please visit. Do not put that E within that <laughs> day like I did. You want to visit www. H E A V E N L Y deposit without an E dot com. Heavenly deposit dot com. Again, thank you so much. Maybe we can get George back on here when he does his next project. Love that. Love Middle that. His next project. And um, again, thank you. We love you. We pray God bless you today on this program. And we oh. look forward to seeing you again. Yes. Thank Amen. you. Both. Yes. Thank you. Yes. God, God bless you both. All right, we'll see you guys in the back of the show. We got some yep. things yes. to say real quick. Amen. Thank you all for watching. Thank you. Amen. Yes. Thank you. Great Thank you. All right. God bless. Shalom. God bless. Shalom. <laughs> <laughs>